everyone. Over the years, I've been surprised to hear students talk about not understanding the nuances of careers in psychology. I wanted to take just a quick minute to give you some facts and details about careers in psychology and topics related to that. This is just meant to be a quick overview with a few important details. It is not meant to be an all-inclusive or an exhaustive list. Let's start with a few facts about psychology. So did you know that psychology is the most common major in college? This is likely because a lot of careers rely on psychology. For example, when I got my bachelor's degree, the state of Connecticut required that everyone becoming an elementary school teacher major in something besides education. And then we specialized or minored in education, depending on how the school labeled the program. This meant that a lot of people going into elementary education majored in psychology. This still holds true today in many states. Psychology is also an integral part of many different careers and gives a good foundation for careers that require a master's or a doctorate degree in something more specific later down the road. There are many different branches of psychology. Psychology isn't just all about therapy. For example, C2's program is rooted in organizational behavior. This is one example of a branch of psychology that looks beyond therapy. You can watch my branches of psychology video to learn more. With all these different branches, it means that not everyone who's majored in psychology is looking to become a psychologist. In an organizational behavior program, it's likely that a person is looking to work in HR or as a supervisor. Some people may be in a psychology program on their path to becoming a dietitian, so they have a background in psychology to help their clients. Some people get a bachelor's in psychology and go on to get a master's in social work or in mental health counseling. It's also important to note that there are different types of psychologists. There are clinical psychologists who do counseling, but there are also psychologists who do research, psychologists who do testing, psychologists who work in developmental psychology and work with child development. The list goes on. It's also important to know that one does not need to become a psychologist to be a therapist or a counselor. I know some of you are hoping to take what you learn about organizational behavior from CTU's program and apply it to working with clients in more of a counseling or therapeutic setting. Did you know though that there, there are different ways to become a therapist or counselor? Now, this is not meant to be an exhaustive list and to find out specific licensure requirements for your state, you'll need to do your own research. This is just meant to give you a good starting point for that research. Since it's what most people think about when they say they want to do counseling, I'm gonna start by talking about psychologists. In most states to become a licensed clinical psychologist, this would be someone who does counseling or therapy. One needs to have a doctorate degree and the doctorate degree needs to come from an APA accredited program. Now, some people would like to become a psychiatrist. So a psychiatrist is a medical doctor. That means they have either an MD or a DO, and that person specializes in psychological medication. This person would be able to prescribe medications, um, and it does require a person to go to medical school. There are also mental health counselors. So being a mental health counselor requires a master's degree from an accredited program. And the type of accreditation required will depend on your state, but most states require KCREP accreditation. Some states will also require that the person pass the national counselor exam in order to become licensed. There are also licensed clinical social workers. This route also requires a master's degree this time in social work or clinical social work, depending on the state and the college. To become a school counselor, it requires a minimum of a master's degree. Depending on the state, a master's in mental health counseling can work. Other states require it to be a master's specifically in school counseling. And finally, addictions counseling. 
depending on your state, you may have the option of becoming a certified addictions counselor or a licensed addictions counselor. In most states, a certified addictions counselor only requires a bachelor's degree, but it must be from an accredited program that focuses on substance abuse. For licensed addiction counselors, a master's degree is required. So here's the, my disclaimer. As you know from the course catalog, CTU's program does not lead to additional licensure or certification. As such, CTU has made no determinations regarding prerequisites for licensure or certification in any state or jurisdiction. If your path is not into organizational behavior, I encourage you to explore the different ways you'll be able to use this foundation in organizational behavior that you're getting with this degree program in order to enrich your career and your future schooling as you continue on to programs in your fields.